What's the buzz, Mort? <laughs> well, <laughs> <are> you laughing? <laughs> because the, the rest of the world is not paying attention, Fred, but it was 10 years ago this very day that television history was made. The Beltway Boys were launched upon the scene. You know, I hope people understand. You think they recognize that this is not an adversarial show. We've done those before, but a buddy show. True. That's the concept. True. True. That we like each other. We disagree about half the time. You know, when, when you hear Obama talking about people coming together and they disagree, but they come together, we're the people that he's been talking about. It's the Beltway Boys, exactly. I think. Exactly. Your, your initials are F and B, but I'm the fair and balanced one. <laughs> Uh, the year was 2008, and history was definitively made there. Our guest tonight is two guests tonight, Morton Kondracki and Fred Barnes. They've been known over the years amongst as other things as the Beltway Boys, which by D.C. standards is a pretty nice gang. They're also the authors of a new book, Jack Kemp, the Bleeding Heart Conservative Who Changed America. Boys, may I call you boys? Uh, thanks for stepping outside the Beltway, coming to join us. We're going to talk about the book, but first want to talk about a little news a day. You guys have followed presidential campaigns off mm -hmm. and on for a while. How is this one so far different from the past? Well, more candidates, uh, more things that turn out to be wrong that everybody assumes. You know, <laughs> when people were saying that, wait, hey, all these guys are going to have these super PACs with all that money, they can stay in forever. <laughs> I think uh, Scott Walker had $20 million in his super PAC, and, uh, and Rick Perry had $17 million. Didn't help with all. Mort, the biggest difference in this campaign, as far as I can see, and I'm a simple man, is it got two two names attached to it: Donald and Trump. Right. Um, exactly. Explain the Trump phenomenon as you understand it, and does it have legs? Uh, I think it does not have legs. Uh, I, I think I think what's uh, powering it is a massive dissatisfaction, especially in the <clears throat> Republican Party with things as they are. Uh, but but. Uh, massive dissatisfaction in the country and you know uh, if I can refer to the book a little bit I mean what Jack Kemp always said was that in a stagnant economy divisions in the country get widened black versus white uh, uh, rich versus poor and demagogues will come along and exploit that uh, that happened in the in the 70s it's happening now Donald Trump is pitting is blaming Mexican immigrants is blaming uh, the Chinese uh, for all of our problems in the country. I mean, what Kemp said w was, what Kemp fought malaise of the 1970s with was ideas. Right. Uh, Kemp Roth and then tax reform. And what, what you need is positive, uh, dramatic programs to convince the ordinary working people that they've got the answer to, to make their life better. Uh, mm. In establishment politics, a mm. big question people ask is, what's wrong with Jeb Bush? So I ask you, Fred Barnes, what is wrong with Jeb well, Bush so far? Well, he certainly run a poor campaign, and maybe his calculation is wrong. You know, his calculation being that I can say now exactly what I'll be saying uh, in, the, in the general election after I win the nomination. I don't have to pander in the primaries. I don't have to go after the base that uh, the Republican, very conservative base that uh, Donald Trump is appealing to and, and appealing to very effectively. That strategy does not appear to be working now. I mean, he's gone, I forget the poll, when he was at 22 percent in June, he's at 7 percent now. That, I mean, that's a huge drop. Well, you think, except you, that if he panders to the base, then he'll do what Mitt Romney did. A little you know? bit of pandering. Well, a little bit. <laughs> well, I think what he's got, what, I think his main problem is that he doesn't grant how unhappy people are. I mean, he, sa he has this message, we are on the verge of the greatest per period in, in world history, right? But we're not going to experience that unless we do certain things. And he, ne he never he never. But don't, but don't, Ra don't Reagan and Kemp <laughs> posit that being optimistic is the right way to win? Yeah, he can be optimistic, but he's also got to acknowledge that we're in bad times. Well, people and he's know that, Mort. Huh? People know that. No, no, no. But he's got to acknowledge it. He's got to say to them, look, I know things are bad now, and here's why they're bad, but we can, we can do better, and here's how we do better. And Trump is right. He's low energy. So can Donald Trump be the Republican nominee? I think so. I don't, I'm not predicting that he, he will, but look, everybody's predictions, including the ones I've heard sitting right here, are that, well, Kemp can't win the nomination. He'll run out. He'll, Trump, he's Trump, fading. Trump, he's losing. Trump, yeah. Trump, yeah. yeah. And, but he, but is, he the most, is he the most likely Republican nominee right now? No, I wouldn't say so. Uh, right now, God, it's hard to pick a likely one, but right. uh, uh, Marco Rubio looks better than the other candidates at the moment. Right. Do you think the Rubio is the likeliest Republican for the establishment to consolidate behind? Um, no, I'm not so sure of that. 
I, you know, John Kasich, they probably won't. Uh, the establishment, uh, the, the Republicans, the donors, and so on, would like to get behind Jeb Bush. I mean, he's the ideal candidate for them, and uh, it's hard to do when he's at seven percent. So I think that there are only maybe three of the of the field that can be elected: uh, Jeb, John Kasich, and uh, and Rubio. maybe Marco Rubio. And it looks as though Rubio is the most. Uh, uh, successful of the gang right now, but who knows after Who's, a while. What's the biggest single obstacle to Hillary Clinton being the next president of the United States? N nobody believes her. You know, uh, people don't don't trust her. They think she's lying. She, they think she's a an uh, a, a opportunist. That everything's about her. That they don't follow the rules. That she's dishonest. Um, That's quite a laundry yeah, list. Right? Yeah, it is. Although uh, basically know, all the same I mean, points. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I know any number of Democrats who are just beside themselves looking for an alternative to Hillary. I mean, they, they're, they're worried that she might get indicted. They're worried that, she'll, that something hugely embarrassing will come along. And um, so they're looking for somebody else. And, it's, and I think they're waiting for Biden. Do you think she'd be a good president? Uh, I think, you know, I'm afraid she'd be a scandal-ridden president. I'm, you know, all this stuff. She was warned way back in the, when, when Bill Clinton was running in 1992. Uh, a friend of mine, David Ifshin, I don't know if you remember sure. him, he was the general counsel of the campaign, warned Hillary that if you don't have an independent investigation of Whitewater, it will lead to a special prosecutor. He got fired for, for doing that. They had their own little internal investigation. What do you know? They had a special prosecutor, and we know the rest, impeachment and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, she's got so many so many uh, ghosts in her closet that I'm afraid that they'll all come popping out and the Republicans will go after her just the way they went after Obama, I think. For, for all the things that Moore just said, what, many of which are true, um, there's still a lot of Republicans who say, if you ask them privately, who's the most likely next president of the United States? They say Hillary Clinton, given the Electoral College, given the demographics. Do you agree with that? I think fewer and fewer are saying that. Right. Uh, because, she, because she's not going to win if she's not the nominee. Uh, and she is. You know, there's one other thing. I thought Hillary was a pretty good candidate in 2008 running against Obama, uh, and she lost narrowly. Remember, she stayed in the race right, sure. a long, long time. Uh, she's not a good candidate this year. You see her smile, and it's fake. Her laugh's fake. And I, think people on, I think people recognize that. If you were advising Joe Biden right now on whether to get in this race or not, what would you tell him? The sooner the better. What's he waiting for? I mean, he looks like he's indecisive, can't make up his mind. Uh, you know, they've leaked these stories about how his son on his deathbed uh, urged his father to run. What more do you need? Do you think he can beat her if he gets in this race? Um, I think it'll be difficult, but, uh, you know, about 35, 40 percent chance. Okay. We've not made us. a single McLaughlin group joke yet, <laughs> but we only have about 30 seconds left of that segment. So I say to you more quickly. Quickly. Quickly, yes. More time. Well, you want a prediction? I want a prediction. Yeah. Who are the nominees, Democrat and Republican? Okay, the nominees uh, are... Quickly. Are, 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 yep, yep, yep. John Kasich <laughs> and Marco Rubio as the, as the Republican ticket. Uh, Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren with a promise by Biden that he will run only one term, thereby appeasing the, the, uh, the, the lefties with... Elizabeth Warren being in you line. You have inexplicably lurched into the possible <laughs> truth. <laughs> Did you follow all that? I, got I, I thought I just said it was, wrong. It was fantabulous. <laughs> More than wrong. Who are it's the, yeah, the nominees going to be? And Kasich, yeah. Florida and Ohio. And Republicans the, and win the those states. Uh, uh, it'll be uh, uh, Biden and somebody, but not Hillary. Wow. Wow. Two, all right. two people picking Biden. Who's not even in the race yet? These two guys. <laughs> All right. Incredible. Yeah, we, it must yeah, be true. We have a great record for accuracy, boy. <laughs> All right. The book again is Jack Kemp, The Bleeding Heart Conservative Who Changed America. A great book, already well received, available at your finer bookshops now. And you can read about a guy who was one of the most influential figures in America who never got elected president. Mort Fred, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.